I mean, it was very difficult to make the game, um, but in some ways it was less difficult than what I had been doing in my life up till then. Having a lot of big ideas about what I wanted to do in games and not ever finishing anything that really had the impact that I wanted to have. I think as one ages and establishes a pattern of that, it becomes a bit demoralizing, right? You start to look at things and say, maybe I'm never going to do these things with my life that I thought I would. And then one day I said, you know what, I'm going to make something that I actually finish, and that became Braid. And you know, it took three years, but I finished it. I think that one of the biggest breakout games would have to be Braid. Braid's a really interesting game because I was surprised it was as successful as it is. It was a uh, big hit for the independent community, and it's one that generated a lot of money for Jonathan Blow. You know, it's a very odd setting, and a lot of people aren't quite sure what it means. Nobody had played a game uh. like Braid that did what Braid did with time before. Really what made Braid work was that, that time, the time-changing mechanic, the rewind mechanic, obviously from a gameplay perspective, was a lot of fun, but that it also had this metaphorical relevance as well. It's telling the strange out of order story and it's a love story and it's not something you normally see in a game. It's about this little kind of preppy boy, I mean he always looks like a preppy to me, who sort of has lost something. Who is sort of working through these memories that kind of change as he keeps playing. Those two things, both the, the, the fictional world and then the game world mechanic, those two work really hand in hand very, very well. So Braid came out of a, the confluence of a couple of different ideas. I was on a mailing list with some friends. One of my friends said, you know, he was looking at Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time, which was a game that came out in the early 2000s. And it had this ability to rewind, but it was uh, limited, you know? You had a certain number of charges that you could use, and when you ran out of those, then you, you got killed. You couldn't rewind anymore. You would just have to reload the game, which was this painful process. So one of my friends said, well, why not just do it like a VCR, where you could rewind any time you want? But nobody in that discussion actually tried it, right? And so I said, okay, I'm feeling inspired. Let me just start this idea for a game I've been kicking around. I spent about a week working on it, and I had a prototype that really uh, is kind of amazing in that if you look at the prototype and then look at the final game, a lot of the ideas from the final game were actually in that prototype that was done the first week. So I had three of the worlds with, you know, I mean, not fully built out three of the worlds, but that the game mechanics were there for rewinding and then rewinding with things that were immune to rewind and then about time and space being tied together so that time changes as you move and I had a number of puzzles on each of those worlds and a couple of them probably half of them are in the final game in recognizable form it was very low effort on my part to do something that was very interesting within the system and I was like wow you know so it it started as a process of experimentation but then it very quickly became a process of discovery it's like if you're sitting on top of a gold mine but you don't even have to really dig it's like you just scoop some dirt aside and there's like a little chunk of gold and then you scoop some more dirt and it's um, and and the most laborious part of the process is actually picking up these heavy chunks of gold and like moving them um so that was an amazing design experience 